In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the five main image types used online and when to use them in your website. We're going to talk about GIFs, JPEGs, PNGs, WebP, and SVG. I'm not going to show you how to create them or manipulate them. I'm just going to explain what they are and when to use them and when they're best used on your site to make sure your site loads quickly. If you like WordPress and getting better at it and all kinds of internet related videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I publish a lot of videos on that topic. And if you run into any problems, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll try to help you out. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab and we're getting started right now. The first one I look at is GIFs and GIFs only purpose for existence at the moment is animation. Having these pictures that are like a little movie. And this is basically just a bunch of images stitched together. It's not actually a movie file, it's a .gif file. And they're quite popular. Giphy is a website dedicated to making GIFs. You can create them yourself. You can go here and upload images. You can create them right online. You can, there's video editing programs, the one that I use, ScreenFlow. It actually has an export GIF option. A lot of video editing programs do. You can just export these little segments that you can send in emails, that you can use in Slack, places like that where you have a little fun little animation. So I'd not recommend using them for anything besides animation. And this image we're going to use as our example for JPEGs and PNGs. It's quite a nice image. It's very large. If you want to add this to your website, it would be quite a bit of file size. And People add images straight to websites that are large in file size, which makes websites slow down. You can optimize images right out of your photo editing program, but people don't know that or don't do that or just want to save time. It's a lot faster just to compress your images on your website. So if this image right here, if we go to File, Save for Web, I'm using Photoshop in this example, but a lot of photo editing programs have a Save for Web option. And it shows us a preview of our image right here. I'm going to find the tree. It's easier to see the change in quality. So first, let's look at JPEGs. A JPEG on high, let's go to maximum actually. Maximum, if we zoom right in, we see that the edge of the tree looks quite nice, quite refined. And the size of the file is 4.4 megabytes. That's huge for an image, huge. You don't want an image that size on your website because that destroys your load time. If you go to very high, 1.7 megabytes, so it looks pretty good. Go to just high, we start seeing these little pixelations, these little what are called artifacts appear. And now we're at 840 kilobytes. Go to medium, more artifacts. Go to low, even more artifacts. And now we're at 200 kilobytes for the image size. If we zoom out, you can't really tell the change in quality that much. But if you have a site where image quality really matters, you don't want to have JPEGs on low for those images that have to be great. An example of where you'd use an image like this, a low quality image, and people wouldn't really notice, is say a background image in the header that has some kind of color overlay added by a page builder. You would not notice this type of artifact and this low quality if you used an image in that way, and you can have the image really small. You don't have to have a huge image size to be able to have them in the background and blurred out and things like that. So that's when you'd use JPEGs. And you can also use JPEGs, just put them on high quality or medium quality, depending on what you need. And they can be great looking images on your site for say blog posts, things like that. PNG 8 has a small set of colors. 256 colors is all it has. So if we zoom in again, we see these dots everywhere. And these dots are there because we don't have enough colors. We don't have enough colors to blend and create a gradient between different colors. And so PNG 8 has dots. If we go to PNG 24, has a lot more colors. We see those dots, they're still there if you look closely, but they're a lot less. And PNG 24 is the most commonly used type of PNG. It allows you to add transparency to an image and make sure you have all the colors that you need. If you have, say, just a black and white image, you can go with PNG 8. You notice the file size difference is huge. It's 2.4 megabytes for a PNG 8. PNG 24, 9.1 for the same image. So the difference in image weight is huge, but PNGs allow you to have transparency. That brings us to WebP. I have a whole video dedicated to it. I've linked to it in the card up above and the description down below. But WebP essentially combines the best of JPEGs, the compression power of JPEGs, 
and the image quality and transparency of PNGs. So with WebP, you can create great looking images that allow transparency. And the video I referenced earlier, that'll show you how to create them if you want to create them. But the problem with WebP is it's not supported by all browsers yet. I also cover that in the other video. It's the browser support that's really holding it back. So you're left with using JPEGs and PNGs. And when you want to use them, again, GIFs are for animations. If you want the image to be animated and moving in some way, make a GIF. If you want it to be highly compressed but still look pretty good, use a JPEG. If you want it to be nearly perfect and have a larger file size and maybe have transparency, use PNG. If you want to use WebP, you're going to exclude some browser types unless you use a plugin that I referenced in the other video as well, the WebP video that allows you to serve WebP to the browsers that can use it and JPEGs or PNGs to all other browsers that can't use WebP. And the last one we'll take a look at is SVG. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. And if we go to this website, Flat Icon, and really any Icon website, they use SVG images. And what that means is this image is scalable to whatever size that you want. Because instead of using pixels to draw the images, it uses lines. So any of these images, these icons come in this size as the thumbnail, but you can expand it to, like I said, any size, and it doesn't lose resolution because it uses lines, uses vectors to create the image instead of pixels. The problem with that is the file size is quite large. So you would not want to use SVG beyond icons and logos and small images like that. You definitely don't want to have full size images like this one as an SVG because the file size would just be unbearable. And that's not the purpose of vector graphics. Vector graphics are used to make crisp, high quality graphics that are scalable to whatever size you want and don't lose image quality, but they're definitely not used for regular images. So those are the five main image types online. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet and you like WordPress and getting better at it, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you just want to say hi. And if this video helped you, make sure you like it on the way to your next video, which is this one right up here, where I show you in detail what WebP is and why it's possibly the future of images on the internet. You can also check out this video down here, which is the one that YouTube thinks you should watch. Until next time, my name is Bjorn Allpass, WP Learning Lab. Keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.